Here with Concordia head men's basketball coach Ben Limbach to preview the 2024-25 season, which is uh, just a little over a couple of weeks away from the first official game as we record this. Um, a lot of guys back from, from last year, and in fact the top nine scorers and, and almost everybody basically other than, than uh, Joel Baker and, and Chief, a uh, couple seniors, but from a, what you're seeing so far, I mean, maybe people expect it just to, to kind of look a lot like last year, but, but what is it, what are you seeing from your perspective? Yeah, I think it's nice to, to have, you know, all the guys back that, that we do have. I think uh, it's a coach's dream. I mean, you, you have, uh, you know, All-Americans back. you got all-conference guys and, and uh, a good young nucleus that plays significant minutes. And, you know, so some of the things we're trying to teach in practice are, are not uh, new to a majority of the team, but um, that can also be a challenge because complacency can set in and, and uh, just running it back mentality. And, and I think... The goal is now to, to continue to build and, and to challenge each day uh, with different things. And I, I think so far uh, we're, we're seeing uh, a group that's that's not satisfied, that, that aren't just waiting for the playoffs or waiting for the end of the year, uh, but understand that, that we have to get better each day. And, and uh, we've had good days, we've had bad days, but, but overall so far we've made good progress and, and uh, excited to see where, where we can go. Well, certainly Noah Shutt is, is one one person that that's on everybody's radar going into this season. It, this is a, a fifth year, a, a COVID year for him. Uh, how, how much convincing did it take from you to, to make that happen? What what? How did you sell him on a, a fifth year? Yeah, I I think uh, I, I really didn't have to sell him on anything. I, I think just the joy he's experienced during his already four years, and, and I think. The, the team coming back, uh, just the chance to play the game of basketball. I mean, I, I think I've said this before. I, I haven't been around many players like Noah that, that love basketball as much as he does. And, and that's more than just his own personal game. But, but I think uh, certainly the Bulldogs, but, but he's a fanatic in a lot of professional and other college teams and, and uh, just loves the game. And I think um, – He's, he's got a lot more free time this year than he's ever had. Just he, he's in a different, uh, he's in the graduate program. So I think, uh, you know, he spends time in the gym and, and uh, he, he's, he's taking each day like he should. And, and uh, that, that's always the challenge uh, with these fifth year uh, student athletes, I think, is, is they just want to fast forward to the end because that's the, the exciting part maybe. But, but he's always been about the process. And, uh, certainly this is uh, a year where he, he understands it and, and now he knows it's his last. I think uh, he's heading into the year knowing that it's, this is it. Well, he, he gets a lot of well-deserved, well-earned attention, I think, but wanted to also talk about the guys who are, are true fourth-year seniors, um, guys like Tristan Smith, Brad Bennett, uh, Brayson Mueller, et cetera, uh, in that class. How, how much have they meant to, to the program and to the success you've been able to have the past few years? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty rare to have this many guys that are four-year year guys, especially with everything with the transfer portal and, and uh, what's, what's happening in college sports in general. And I think, uh, man, what a group. Uh, you know, we were, we were just talking as coaches. You, you try to enjoy – uh, these guys as much as you can each day and take joy uh, in, in the relationships and, and uh, you know those guys have, have been through a lot uh, together you know you look at Tristan Smith and, and he's he's had a, a tremendous career and, and uh, you know this year he's he's uh, taken it to a whole new level athletically I think he's getting healthier each each day and, and uh, he looks great and, and uh, he's doing some really good things at both ends um, and certainly you mentioned Brad Bennett he, he's been around and, and uh, you know one of the best shooters uh, to come through uh, and, and I think uh, you know again he, he just uh, is kind of that unsung hero sometimes uh, but been very consistent over his career and and, uh, and then there's other seniors you know I, I think Brayson came on last year in moments and, and uh, Tony Tubrick is, is a guy that, that we hope can take the next step and, and uh, I, I think there, there's uh, other seniors that have been involved you know Matt Wiseman and uh, some managers too that, that I think um, have all contributed in a lot of ways and, and uh, uh, it's going to be a, a fun class to, to see this thing all the way through with and, and uh, certainly it, uh, it's been uh, a joy so far. Well, and 
regards to Tristan, I'm sure we'll see some some more highlight reel dunks. So that's <laughs> reason for people to, to show up to Friedrich that's Arena right. every every night. But is there something more from a coaching perspective that you're asking of, of Tristan? You said he's looking at maybe as good as he he ever has. Yeah, no, I mean his his, uh, his dunks certainly. If you like dunks, uh, come come watch us play. I, I think uh, I mean it just. He's he's incredible above the rim right now, and, and uh, but no, I, I thought defensively his sophomore year before he got injured, he was on pace to possibly be the defensive player of the year. I mean, he was that good. Um, we're asking him to do a lot this year defensively, and, and uh, so his stamina and his, his conditioning level, uh, you know, we, we want to continue to monitor that. But um, but no, I, I've been most impressed with his. I mean, his desire to lead, he, he's one of our more vocal leaders, and, and uh, he's a competitor, and, and uh, he, he's just taken that role um, even even more so this year. So I, I, I can't wait to see uh, kind of how our team um, changes throughout the year, and, and it's largely in part to what he's been doing um, in the locker room especially, but, uh, but certainly he's making an impact at both ends. Well, the, the point guard role, I think, is something that you've uh, divided up a little bit the past couple of years. Um, uh, I think there were times even when Noah brought the ball up to, <laughs> to give him a chance to really create and attack, yeah. but what, what, what are you expecting to look like from that perspective? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, that that's one of those positions, you know, the, the game's changed a lot. I, I think you're right. We had Noah, Tristan, I mean, the guys that, that get rebounds just bring it uh, a lot of times, but there's certainly times where you need uh, a primary ball handler, uh, somebody that, that can, you know, handle pressure and get you in an offense a little easier. Uh, so beyond uh, every guy, and, and especially our, our bigs, I, I think, um, you know, we're, we're looking at different guys. I mean, Hayden Frank got some time last year in that position. I, I know that was valuable for him. Um, you know, we're looking at Lucas Helms. Uh, he's a guy that, that provides some length and size, uh, which is much needed at the, the highest level, especially at the national level. Um, and then you got freshmen coming in that I'm excited about that could also uh, compete and, and, uh, and play that primary ball handler. Uh, Eli Gath and, and Dane Jacobson are, are looking uh, strong in, in that area too and, and uh, certainly again we, we play kind of the positionless basketball so um, those guys will all play with each other most likely in, in, in various times but uh, certainly uh, I, I feel very strong about um, who, who's kind of you know taking that that lead this year and who will be handling it a lot more and, and uh, those four I think will be the, the biggest ones. I uh, one, wanted to touch on that sophomore group that you mentioned a couple of them um, Lucas Helms was a starter all year, and, and Jackson Stuvey mm -hmm. kind of jumped into that role as well. Um, what are what are the expectations for those guys now that they have experience? Yeah, I, I kind of challenged all those freshmen that played last year. Uh, you know, we, we want to see them take it to another level. Uh, I think the, the goal, even though a lot of guys are back from last year's team, uh, that doesn't mean you, you should want or, or play the same type of role you had last year. And, you know, certainly starts with those two guys who, who did start a lot of the games. And uh, Jackson Stuby, I mean, he's a tremendous defender. I, I think um, when he turns it on, I mean, I, I think he can guard one through five at times. And, and I think. Um, very physical, very long. He, he did a great job adding some strength and weight um, to already a very athletic uh, build. And, and so I'm excited to see what he's going to do, uh, especially at the defensive end of the ball. Um, you know, and Lucas Helms is just one of those unique unicorn guys where where they just do wild moments in practice. They make things look easy. Um, you know, he, he's put on some good weight. Uh, he, he already got some valuable time last year, but his court vision, his ability to get to the paint, uh, he's, he's very good in the open court. Um, you know, and he's very similar to Tristan Smith where his body's evolving and, and uh, could, could play a variety of positions because of that. And so, um, but I, I'm excited about what he did last year, but, but even more so the steps he's taken this year to develop his game. Based on all these quality guys that we've we've talked about, that certainly expectations are high. I'm sure the guys feel that in the locker room too. But how have they kind of embraced that, knowing that uh, uh, you're probably going to get teams 
best shots a lot of nights too. Yeah, no, I, I think we want that. I, I think we, we want to make sure that, that we're, we're prepared for those moments. So our, our practices are very competitive right now. I, I think there, there's guys that we haven't even talked about. Brooks Kissinger looks really, really good right now, and he got some great time. And, and so, um, you know, Zach Coolis is looking very strong. You know, Logan Wilson's back from a knee injury from last year. And, and uh, you know, Tyler Harvey, some of these guys that, that played great minutes last year. Uh, so I, I think to prepare for that, that, that mindset where we're going to be the hunted, uh, it starts in practice where, where you're looking across and ideally you're competing against somebody that's really, really good. And, and uh, maybe once your job or once that new role, and, and I think that's just creating a lot more intensity and, and, a, and a more of a purpose-filled practice. I wanted to mention about the, the celebration that was had last year with 100 years of, of men's basketball. Just how, how special is that and how important is it to, to stay connected kind of with the past and, and all the alums and stuff like that? I, I think it's always important. I, I think, uh, you know, there, there's so many guys that have, have put on the uniform before us and, and I think uh, just connecting with that, uh, I, I think the biggest part was was those of us that have played here, uh, the, the amount of uh, you know memories and, and the joy, uh, just just to to celebrate that again, to have guys come back from that that 100 year celebration that hadn't been back in a while to reconnect with teammates. Um, it's special for those those uh, those of us older guys, but it also shows the current players. Um, don't don't take for granted the opportunity you do have, right? Like there's very few that can actually play college basketball and get that opportunity, and and not only that to do it in a wonderful university like Concordia, um, where we value the Christian faith, we value the academics, um, and and the brotherhood that goes with it. It's not just about trophies and wins. Um, so I, I think connecting all of that has been something that I've that, uh, really tried to be more intentional about and I know it's something important to, to our administration as well and, and our university and it's always been that way. So, um, so that was just one, one weekend that, that was just one that a lot of us will never forget for a variety of reasons but, um, but we hope to continue that and, and really build on kind of this tradition, this legacy and it's, it's more than just the, the wins. Uh, again, it's the you know, the Bulldog basketball, the, the brotherhood of, of what it embodies. Well, schedule this year, you get your usual 20 league games and, yep. and the eight games out of conference. Um, went to Hawaii last year. Now you're going to be in Phoenix area around a little bit before Christmas. Uh, there's also a chance to, I guess, rekindle an old rivalry with yep. Nebraska Wesleyan coming here. Um, um, what do you like kind of about the how, how the non-conference lays out? Yeah, no, I, I think it's a fun schedule. I, I think uh, we, we start off with the Cattle Classic with, with a couple of really good Division three teams that uh, you don't always get to see. And, and uh, certainly uh, Nebraska Wesleyan, there, there's a lot of history behind that um, as well. And, and uh, certainly uh, should be a fun weekend and a, and a huge fundraiser for our community. But then our non-conference, you know, you got teams out of the, you know, KCAC and, and uh, you know, the Hearts, you know, with Mid-American Nazarene and, and Bethel, and certainly going out to Phoenix for the, the nice weather, but we're playing some pretty big heavy hitters out there just to, to see where we're at from a national standpoint um, and, and to play some, some teams that maybe you'll see at the national tournament, uh, ideally. Um, and ultimately, it, it prepares us for hopefully our league which uh, night in and night out, um, I think every league talks about how tough their league is, but, but I think uh, the parity within the last few years in the GPAC, you know, with a three-way tie last year for the league title and some of these, some of these things that, that you need to prepare your teams for and playing against good competition um, should, should allow you to, to at least be battle-tested as you, you go into league play. Um, and, and lastly, I know you guys try to come up with some kind of theme each year to yeah. I don't know, kind of focus your attention and, and everybody. Um, but what, what is that theme for, for this year? How does it fit this team? Yeah, I think uh, it's an acronym uh, uh, that, you know, team, together, everyone achieves more, uh, which I think is the GPAC. Is that the GPAC? I think, I think that actually might <laughs> it be. It might be. 
Uh, I didn't tell the guys that. I, I think it's great to be aligned uh, as well. But, but I think uh, you know the, the the goal is that you know they come up with something that we feel like will will help us overcome any obstacles that that come our way. And, and I think we have a lot of depth. I, I feel like this year we have a lot of great uh, great things uh, you know throughout our program. And, and if we can have that that together mindset where it's not just one guy, but you know, it's not just Noah or Tristan. It, it's it's everybody together. Uh, it's everyone. Uh, and then there's got to be some sort of achievement, right? Like, what are we pushing for? Is, is there a purpose behind what we're doing, or are we just all trying our own thing? Um, and we want more. You know, together everyone achieves more. I, I think last year was good. I think uh, the seniors have had a good run of, of uh, accolades and, and accomplishments, but. Uh, I, I think they're hungry for more, and I, I think it's an appropriate theme that we'll draw on throughout the year. Um, you know, I, I think there's a lot of things that go into that that we'll talk about, but certainly, um, I, I, I love that that the the, uh, the this team values that team aspect this year too. All right. Last thing, how about a, a Sco Dogs? Sco Dogs. <laughs>